Hello everybody, Shadow here, and welcome back to Virtue's Last Reward. Last time, we went through one of the white doors with Tenmyoji and Quark, and explored the director's office. And uh, Tenmyoji apparently forgot something in there. What was it? The picture. Ugh, how could I forget it? Right? <laughs> oh yeah, well, we must have set it down after using the face recognition thing. Yeah. I'm going back. You two go on ahead to the warehouse. Okay. I want to come with you. <laughs> Me nah, too. That's fine. Why don't you head back to the warehouse, Sigma? The others are probably already waiting. Okay. All right. I'll see you two later right. then. Bye, Mr. Sigma. Bye. Bye. I watched them jog off towards the blue door. And then they were gone. Guess I should be getting back then. Well, cool. Well, is everybody else back? Oh gosh, at some point we probably have to break the news to, uh, to Quark that, uh, well, Alice is dead. Hello, everybody. Did you kill each other while we were separated? It's actually kind of possible. I, st I stepped into the warehouse to find all the other teams already there. Kay and Luna. Fi and Clover. And Dio. The moment Dio spotted me, he dashed over to the rightmost AB door and slid his card through the reader. Well, don't you suck. Okay. An ambidex gate has been opened. Right. 45. Yes. As he turned to look at me, I swore I saw a flash of a smug grin. There. Happy? This time I waited for you to get back before I opened it. Right. You see? I can be considerate. Sure. <laughs> but Tenmyoji and Quark aren't there. Yeah, aren't where here. are they? I guess they first... I guess they forgot something back in the room we found. They ran back to grab it real quick. And they'll quick. be here in a few minutes. No big deal. Right. While we waited, we exchanged information about the rooms we'd investigated. Unfortunately, none of it seemed very useful. None of us had found anything, and we were no closer to unraveling any of the increasing number of mysteries we were faced with. With that discussion exhausted, we sat down to wait. Before long, 20 minutes had passed since Dio opened the door, and Tenmyoji and Quark were nowhere to no in sight. Blah, 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 blah. Don't you think they're taking a little long? Yeah, a little bit. Yes, I'm getting worried. What if something happened to them? <laughs> I'll go have a look. Then I shall accompany you. Okay, nah, I'll be fine by myself. It's not that far away. It actually kind of is. Just don't look into the abyss too long, or you might become a monster. Okay. That's... I don't think... Okay. See, a statement like this ex is exactly why I uh, uh, relate to Sigma so much. Because I have moments exactly like that. I was like, well, te well, technically... Mm, okay. <laughs> Look, I'm just going to I'm just going to the director's office. I'll be right back. No big deal. Right. See you guys later. I mean, it's not like we're going to die if we don't get back. We'll just default to ally and the others are missing too, so they'll default to ally and we'll all gain 2 points. I gave a quick goodbye wave and stepped out of the warehouse. Oh, don't show me the map again. Oh, I can skip this. Okay, cool. <laughs> nice. Hello? Hello? Anybody here? Hello? Nobody? Huh? That's odd. There's nobody here. 
picture's gone, though. Tenmi Tenmyoji and Quark must have been here, then. I laid out the floor B map. Hmm. They must have taken the door that faces the warehouse. After that, they probably went through the warehouse and out of the blue door to the elevator. Yeah, that's a much shorter route. On the other hand, I came through the red door, which is kind of the long way around. Huh. Looks like we managed to miss each other perfectly. Ugh. Well, this was a huge waste of time. Shoot, might as well head back, I suppose. I packed up the map and was headed towards the door when... Huh? There was a light on where there hadn't been a light before. Oh! What? Why is that thing on? We messed with it earlier, but nothing seemed to work. I felt a sudden wave of inexplicable, nauseating dread. The light stared at me. I swallowed and edged cautiously closer, cautiously towards it. The machine was in arm's reach now. I stretched my hand out towards it, slowly, slowly. Oh, hi! So, Who are you? You finally made it. Okay. N no, you're... I am Zero. Oh, hi! I was the one who brought you here. Okay! You undoubtedly have as many questions for me as there are stars in the sky. Right. As you can see, however, this is only a recording. Right. I will therefore be unable to directly answer any questions. Okay. Ask if you wish, but I cannot respond. Right. Ugh. I considered ta taking a swing at him, but decided that was spectacularly uh, futile and kept my bald fist at my side. Now, where to begin? There are many things I wish to tell you. Okay. But unfortunately, our time is limited. Right. As such, the information I can provide is also limited. Right. Okay. I have chosen two things of great importance to tell you. Okay. First, I will tell you about termites. Okay, I'm not sure how that helps, but sure. In retrospect, I suppose that's a rather odd thing to say. <laughs> yes. Indeed. I imagine you bewildered right now. Perfectly understandable. Okay. The person who Get to it. To you and threatened you with death is lecturing you about insects. Right. I suspect it hardly seems fair. Yeah. Nonetheless. But life is simply is unfair. Important. In a way, it will determine your fate. Okay. So I ask that you listen carefully. Got it. Have you ever seen a termite mound? Uh, no, can't They're say that I have. They're structures. Some might even call them works of art. Okay. Termites are natural architects. And their right. mounds are both structurally sound and make excellent use of space. Interesting. So, are they following some sort of plan as they build? Are there termite blueprints detailing which room goes where? I don't know. Of course not. Each termite is simply an oblivious cog in a tremendous machine programmed by millions of years of termite DNA. Okay. It is doubtful an individual termite has any idea what its contributions are helping to create. Interesting. I don't know what the heck you're talking about, buddy. But a human does. Okay. We can appreciate the elegant forms of their alien cathedrals. Right. We can see the simple beauty of their perfect functionality. Okay. We can understand the splendid planning of their structure. Okay. In other words, only an intelligence of a higher order can understand the beauty of what the termite builds. Interesting. Well, what's your point? Now, consider humans. Why are we alive? Very good question. Why do we love and give birth? Why do we create? From where do our cultures spring? There are many theories. No one knows the truth. Okay. We are oblivious cogs in a tremendous machine programmed by millions of years of human DNA. Right. No doubt you see now what this analogy is supposed to illustrate. Okay. Yes, I mean to say humans are not different from termites. 
Interesting. We trudge through our lives with no greater understanding of our ultimate goal. Okay. You might say we don't understand what we're building. Only okay. The intelligence of a higher order than ours can understand what we're doing. If you say so. Imagine how we might look to such an intelligence. We may be building some structure so perfect and elegant we can't even perceive it. Okay. Whatever it is, we've likely been building. <laughs> I'm just absorbing all of this. Just above the ones we know since time immemorial. Okay. If we are like the termites, then what we've created is almost certainly something of tremendous beauty. Okay. Uh, so what was your other thing? And you are about to catch a glimpse of it. I am. Or have you already? That's a very good question. Well, that's enough on that subject, I think. Okay. Consider what I've said. Will do. Now, let's move on to the second topic. Okay. It is somewhat more immediately meaningful to your life, and, in fact, the lives of several billion other people. Right. I realize this is rather sudden, but I have a password for you. You have a password for me. Okay. Um. It is the password to disarm the bomb, numbered one. Okay. Um, bombs? <laughs> bombs? <laughs> okay. Let me, uh, let me jot this down real quick. Bomb one. Are you ready? I will only Got it. say this once. Okay. So pay close attention. Right. The password to disarm the number one bomb is BQZ. Okay. Oh, gosh. BQZ. RGJ. DXR. BQZ. R G J D X R. There are bombs. <laughs> well, consider me bamboozled. <laughs> I knew there was bombs. I knew there was bombs. I'm just joking. <laughs> but this is the first we've heard of it <laughs> in the game. I had no idea what he was talking about. What bomb? Was he saying there were bombs too? If he'd guessed at my future confusion, he showed no sign of it. That is the last of the information this message was meant to convey. Okay. Before I go, however, I have a warning. All right. You cannot tell any of your companions what you heard or saw here. Okay. If you do, you will be penalized immediately. Oh, boy. I hope we will meet again someday. We would have much to discuss. Right. Wait. God damn it, you can't just spout all that crap and disappear. I found myself yelling at empty air. The hologram had disappeared. Ugh. What kind of an idiot does he take me for? Termites? Other dimensions? How could that have anything to do with kidnapping us? <laughs> Shit. I kicked it out at, an em at a nearby shelf. Sorry, I can't talk today. Again. Ten minutes remain. Oh, until boy! Until the next game polling closes. Okay. All players, please enter your votes. Right. If no vote is... Yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, crap. I need to get back. Not like there's any point staying here. I spun around and ran out of the room towards the warehouse. Grandpa! Look! Mr. Sigma's back! Hi! <laughs> Took you long enough. Okay. <sighs> Where are the others? In the AB rooms. Okay. They went in on. They went in. Blah, 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 blah. They went in already? Yep. Why didn't you two? Have you been waiting for me? Yeah, Grandpa said there was something he had to tell you before we voted, no matter what. Okay. Nothing no? that significant. Just wanted to tell you we're going to choose Ally this round. Okay. That's it. And you had to tell me that no matter what? Seems kind of pointless. 
I mean, words are cheap. You can promise whatever you want. True, but we've got something to back it up. Okay. Just hear me out. Right. Okay. Go ahead. Quark and I both have eight BP. We're already on the home stretch. Okay. So what do we need to get to the magic number? Well, we need you to choose ally. Okay. If you do that, it doesn't really matter to us what we pick. Right. You'd get to nine whether you got two or three points. Exactly. That being the case, we don't have any reason to betray you. Okay. And if we both choose ally, we both gain points. Right. True, but you must have considered that I'll choose Betray. That would mean you'd choose Betray to protect yourself. But that's why we're telling you we won't choose Betray. Okay. Mm -hmm. Can I trust you? Of course. All right, tell me one thing. Let's say we do this in both ally. ally. Everybody gets two points. That means you and Quark will have enough to leave, which is great for you. But I'll be stuck with a measly five. How do I know you aren't going to just open the number nine door and leave us in the lurch? I can guarantee it. I can give How? you my word. I okay. will not open the number nine door, even if I have enough points to do so. Okay. I swear it. We aren't going to abandon everybody else just so we can escape. Okay. I swear too. I don't know if I believe you. I promise. Man. So... All you've got is a promise, huh? When I make a promise. I keep it. Okay. Trust me. Please! You've got to trust us! Hmm. All right. Fine. I'll trust you. Two minutes remain. Okay. Until and. Got it. We're counting on you, Sigma. Right? you got to choose ally. You promised! Okay. With that, they turned and ran into the A-B room, second from the right. Well, guess I should get moving. Okie doke. Well, I guess I've got a choice to make. One minute. Right. I had a decision to make. Should I trust Quark and Tenmyoji? Well, I could believe they were telling the... I could believe... I could believe they were telling the truth and still betray them. That would bring my BP to six. I'd be that much closer to nine. And choosing betray would guarantee that they wouldn't try to es try and escape without the rest of us. Betrayal seemed like the safe bet, but... Please! You've got to trust us! Right? You've got to choose ally! Okay! You promise! Denmyoji I could betray easily enough. But Quark? What the hell was I going to do? Ten seconds. Yeah, yeah, ten nine, seconds. Nine, eight, eight, eight seven, six, seven, five. Six, shut up. Five. Four. Got it. Three. Two. One. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll choose Ally. <laughs> I mean, we're going to see both options anyway. Uh, but we'll choose Ally first, because I can't betray Quark. Of the Ambidex game has been completed. Not immediately. Results <laughs> will be displayed in the warehouse. Okay. Thank you for your participation. Ambidex You're welcome. Do-do-do-do-do. Result no. from Ratley's direct. Got it. All right. So. Betray, betray. That makes sense. Betray ally. Yeah. <laughs> I knew you were going to do it. You little punks. You guys suck. You know that? Points have been. Please check your bracelet. To see your updated bracelet points. Okay. Ha! 
Hey! What the hell, guys? Why'd you betray me? I had nothing to do with this. I made the vote. Grandpa. Okay, Tenmyoji, now you're just being a jerk. All right, fine. Why'd you break your promise, Tenmyoji? I only promised you one thing. We wouldn't open the number nine door, even if we got nine points. But you don't have to, because Clover's got 11 points too. What? So you're not going to leave? Not what I said. Of course we're going to leave. What? Look, see Clover over there? Wh what? Don't tell me. Clover, you jerk. <laughs> It's really weird how, like, I'm saying, Sig I'm saying Sigma swears oh, no. and stuff, but then I'm just like, you jerk, you. <laughs> it's really weird to go back and forth. Jeez. That bitch. Wait, Quark and Tenmyoji have. And now they're booking it. The words were barely out of her mouth when Tenmyoji and Quark ran past. No. God damn it! Well, the door's already opening, so it's not like we can do much. Over? Are you really going to leave? Well, yeah. Why else would I open the door? Okay. But why? I'm going to go call the others, so we can capture Zero Senior. Okay. Tenmyoji, are you and Quark going too? Yeah. Sorry about that. Okay. Sorry, everybody. So, Sigma, happy? I kept my promise. Clover opened the door, not me. You suck! <laughs> like hell, I'm happy! That's some shady shit, Tanmyoji. Say so. I have to get out of here, and that's that. He's gotta pay for what he's done. Okay. He? Zero. You mean you know who Zero Senior is? Yeah. Okay. I'm keeping it a secret now, I suppose. I know exactly who Zero Senior is. I see. What? Oh my. Uh, are you gonna say? You're just gonna leave us hanging? Right. Nine of seconds. Let's go. Come on, guys. Time to move. Right. Oh, wait. This is for you, Mr. Sigma. Okay. Why? Quark held something out. I look down to see two pieces of folded paper. What is this? It's a letter. I wrote okay. it in the director's office before the AB game. I see. I wanted to tell you what kind of guy Grandpa is. Okay. So, read it, okay? All right. Um, okay. He pressed it into my hand. See you later, Mr. Sigma. Okay. Then he turned and ran towards the door. Tenmi OG and Clover following in his footsteps. I was so surprised by the letter that I didn't even try to stop them. Before I could think of anything to say... See you. Goodbye. Well! Goodbye! Okay. Well, we're stuck. Okay. The number nine door has closed. Right. This ends. Thank yeah. you. For your participation. You're welcome. The game is over. Escape yeah, yeah. is not. Please enjoy. Right. Shit. Right. Gone. Yeah. All we can do now is hope they bring help back. Right. Indeed. I agree. Well, shoot. I looked down at Quark's letter and slowly unfolded it. His handwriting was slightly uneven, but he'd filled both pages with writing. I began to read, and here we get one of the first endings. It was a really stormy day when he found me. He said the rain was coming down so hard it almost hurt, but somehow he managed to hear a baby crying. I guess I must have been crying pretty loud. He took me home and did his best to raise me, but he'd never been married or had a kid before, so I think it was really hard for him. He couldn't figure out how to mix the formula, so he was always carrying the directions around with him. Also, I guess I was a pretty picky eater, so if he didn't get the water to formula ratio just right, I wouldn't eat it. I guess I was kind of a pain, huh? But he didn't give up, and now here I am. 
When he found me, and I, I, was a, I was really, really small, and he was worried that I might not make it. That's why he named me Quark. A quark is a really, really small thing, and I was really, really small too. Grandpa didn't need to worry, though, because it turned out that I was, a, I was pretty tough. When I was one, he forgot I was sleeping in the bed of his truck and drove off. I rolled out and went off the back, but I didn't even get scratched. Dang! <laughs> When I started walking, I started walking when I was two, and when he wasn't looking, I fell down the stairs. I didn't get hurt then either. When I was three, I got really sick. I had a super high fever for a week, but eventually I got better. I guess you could say I'm pretty lucky. Right? <laughs> anyway, I didn't really have any more accidents after that, and I was a pretty healthy kid. By the time I was six, I had started helping Grandpa out with his work. Dang, six. His job was to gather junk from abandoned buildings. Then he'd fix it up or pull out the useful parts and sell them. There were plenty of abandoned buildings, but finding good stuff in them was hard. You had to know which parts were useful, or you could end up wasting a bunch of time. Every time I'd find something, he'd explain to me what it was, how it was supposed to work, how to fix it, all sorts of things. Usually though, I just wanted to finish up work so I, so I could go to the theater. That's a mood. The theater came to our town once a week in a wagon. They'd show old news or movies. I went every single week, but Grandpa only went once in a while, and he'd only go weeks when they showed when they showed movies. Oh yeah, I didn't know that I'd been adopted until I was seven. One of the other kids on my block told me. I guess after Grandpa found me, he looked all over town to try to find somebody who'd take me. The kid from my block actually had a mom and he'd asked her if she would take me too. I gotta admit, I was pretty shocked when I heard that. There were a lot of kids with parents around, so hearing that somebody lived with his actual mom was pretty impressive. Oh, that, I, I read that as were a lot of kids, but there weren't. I was also kind of surprised that Grandpa had tried to get someone else to take care of me. Did that mean he didn't want, he didn't want me? The kid who told me about Grandpa trying to get rid of me was a real jerk. He was totally spoiled, and he bragged to everybody about how he had a mom. Yeah, yeah, that seems like a jerk. <laughs> He'd like to come up to me when I was working and say stuff like, Must be hard not having a mother. It never bothered me before, but after I found out that Grandpa had adopted me, I started to think that maybe he didn't really want me. If I could work on my own, then, I, then he could get rid of me. I was scared to know the truth, so I never asked him. Then one day he took me to a bar in our neighborhood. During the day, of course. He went there sometimes to drink scotch, but I'd never gone before. When we got in, he just walked up to the counter with that grumpy look he has, and I thought, oh no, he's gonna make me work here. But I was wrong. I saw him pass something to the bartender, and then he picked me up and sat me down on a stool next to the counter. The stool was pretty high, especially for a seven-year-old kid and my legs just dangled off of it. He seemed, it seemed really, really high to me, and I was pretty nervous. This is just so heart-wrenching. I'm so like, oh gosh, it's been so long since I've read this. Eventually, the bartender came back. Ugh, sorry, brain, just failing reading again. Eventually, the bartender came back over with a glass of scotch and another big, big glass full of something else. As I looked closer, I realized the second glass was full of some sort of brown liquid with a scoop of ice cream in it. It took me a minute to realize that it was a root beer float. I'd never seen one before. I was so surprised. Root beer was even more expensive than the nicest alcohol in the bar. To me and the other kids, it seemed like an urban legend than, more like an urban legend than a real drink. But there it was, right in front of me. I stared at, I stared at the float. I wasn't even sure it was real at that point, and then turned to look at Grandpa. He looked back at me. I didn't know what to do, so I turned to the bartender. He'd already turned, he'd already turned around and moved off, though, so I figured he must have put the glass down in front of me on purpose. It still didn't seem like it could be real, and I was just staring at it when Grandpa told me to hurry up and drink it before the ice cream melted. His gruff voice sounded like an angel's. Is this really mine? He nodded. Words can't describe how awesome it was. I'd never, ta I'd never tasted anything like root beer before. 
The creamy sweetness of the ice cream made my entire head feel light. I felt like the luckiest boy in the whole world. That's not an exaggeration. I really thought that. <laughs> oh, I love it. The root beer float was delicious, but what made me even happier was Grandpa. When I looked over at him, he was smiling. I know that's gotta be hard for you to imagine, but he really was. Right then, I didn't care whether he'd just found me and adopted me or not. He'd bought me a root beer float. That made me way luckier than some kid who had a mother but had never tasted root beer. Of course, after we left the bar, he was the first kid I bragged to. So Grandpa and I were doing pretty good. Until the fight. I was in a super bad mood that day. I'd torn, I'd torn one of my shoes that morning and some old drunk guy had yelled at me. All the junk I found was totally useless. The day was almost over and I was fed up. So I just grabbed some random trash and took it back to the house. <laughs> oh, no. I forgot that this played during this portion. Oh no. When I showed what I'd found to Grandpa, he frowned. He started going through each thing I'd brought back, explaining why they were all useless. I got really mad and just yelled, I don't care. Then he got mad and I couldn't take it anymore, so I ran away. I was pretty upset and I started thinking that maybe Grandpa had only adopted me so he could raise me to work and make money for him. After a while, I went and hid in an abandoned building, but by then I'd started to calm down and think that maybe I should go back and apologize. It had started raining pretty hard though, so I decided I should wait for it to stop. But that was just an excuse. The truth was that I was nervous. Part of me knew I'd done something wrong, but I didn't want to admit it. The rain didn't stop though, so I just sat there staring out at the gloomy gray sky. I'd imagine I imagined Grandpa coming to get me. It kept, it kept raining all night, and he never showed. I gave up waiting and decided it was time to go home. I was about halfway there when I heard somebody groaning. At first I thought I should just ignore it and not get involved, but I went over anyway and it was Grandpa. He was totally soaked, and I could tell right away that he had been there for a really long time. I yelled and he opened his eyes a little bit. He smiled weakly and said he was glad I was safe. He'd spent all night out in the rain looking for me. I felt awful. Grandpa had been out in the rain looking for me so long that he'd collapsed. I was horrible. He'd heard me crying in the rain, but I hadn't heard him. As I ran to get the doctor, I, I, prom I promised whatever god might be listening that if they would only save Grandpa, I'd never ask for another root beer float ever again. He got a really bad fever and his temperature wouldn't go down for days. The doctor said that if it kept up, he'd die. If he died, then I'd be, then I'd be all alone. There wouldn't be anybody left to care about me. The thought of that happening terrified me. Fortunately, I must have passed some of my luck on to Grandpa, because a week later his fever finally broke. I was glad he wasn't going to die, but I was also a little scared. What if he had decided he didn't want a stupid kid like me around anymore? My plan was to apologize as soon as he woke up, but when the moment came my brain just stopped. Grandpa, was started, Grandpa started to talk and it took me to realize he was apologizing. I didn't know what to think. He explained that he was an old man, and that, and that meant he was probably going to die sooner rather than later. He was strict with me because he wanted to make sure I'd be able to make it on my own after he was gone, but maybe he'd been a little too strict. All of the things I'd worried about had been stupid and selfish. Grandpa cared about me a whole lot. He'd been worried when I ran off, and he'd gone out into the rain to look for me. I tried to apologize, but I went, but when I opened my mouth, I just started crying. I don't think I've cried that much since I was a baby. But he just smiled and patted my head. I asked him if he'd ever regretted adopting me. His eyes got all wide and he said, of course not. He told me that he was looking for a really important lady. Because of that, he'd had to give up on pretty much everything else in his life. But when he took me in and started raising me, felt like he'd gotten some of what he lost back. That was when I decided I'd stay with him forever. 
Even if he said I couldn't. Oh, it's so sweet. <laughs> oh, oh. Quark, you beautiful child. Oh gosh, we're hitting the credits. Oh, we're hitting the credits. <laughs> oh no. Oh gosh. I'm assuming the credits are gonna... Yeah, there we go. I was like, I think the, the credits just start on the, on the build-up. Yeah. Oh gosh, I'm so... <laughs> it's been so long. It's been so long since I have um, actually read that whole message and stuff. Oh, it's great. I'm so... <laughs> I'm so happy and sad at the same time. Because here's the thing. Uh, the song that was playing during the the message, the one that I freaked out to, uh, it has some meaning later on that really hits, and uh, I kind of forgot that it is in that scene. So all of the feelings for that other scene started playing in my head, along with the, the feelings for the actual scene that was playing. And now I'm getting all of the feels from the credits music. <laughs> oh, gosh. Oh, what a first ending to get. Oh, jeepers, creepers. Oh, oh I'm, I'm sad. Because you can't be mad at them after that. <laughs> You're just like, oh gosh, I was a jerk for being mad to these people. Also, that uh, that story was an allusion to some of the reveals that we'll get to later down the line, but we have technically already gotten some hints towards, uh, but nothing has been spelled out yet, so I'm not gonna say it either. Okay, uh, I should probably... I don't know if I can actually skip the... Can I not act? Huh. I actually can't skip the credits. Okay! Um... I'm afraid to press any of the buttons on my keyboard. So I'm just mashing the buttons on my controller. But yeah, I guess... I guess we'll have to see the credits every time. Uh, after this... For all the other endings, except for, like, the final ending, we'll probably, uh, skip the credits. But, uh, for this one, I guess we just kind of talked through it. Or I guess we'll just discuss the... We'll just discuss the ending that we got. So yeah, this is the Ten Miyoji end. It seems like it would be the Quark end, but it's not. Okay, uh, we're saving here... So now we got Tan Miyoji on our uh, thing. We're not quite ending because we have this part, which I bel I actually don't remember. I think this is just a game over because uh, Clover still has the Clover still has 11 BP after this, regardless of us picking Betray. So uh, it'll probably just be sort of like the other one that we saw, where Clover just well. The other one where we saw the... I don't know. I don't know what I'm even talking about anymore. <laughs> but yeah. Clover is gonna leave and we're all gonna be stuck here and that's gonna be it. Pretty much. Okay. Reasonies. Yeah, yeah. Hello! Betray, betray. Betray, ally. Betray, betray. K is the only person who allied. Genius. Points, okay. Please. Right. Hey, what's Quark the deal? Had nothing to do with it. I okay. To vote. So why did you choose betray? Couldn't I ask you the same thing? I don't really think this is the time for a fight, though. Look, Clover's over by the door. Right. 
What? what? Oh no. Well, bye, Clover. You suck. The number nine door. Right. Fuck, she opened it. Yep. Ugh. Yeah. Why? Clover, wait. I mean, it's already too late. She's opened the door. <laughs> and she's about to get on the floor. And, uh, cons <laughs> considering how she's dressed, she probably will walk the dinosaur. <laughs> Clover, what the hell are you doing? <laughs> What are you- what the hell do you think you're doing? Sorry, I read that I'm wrong. I'm going to call the others. Okay. I'll what? Justice for Alice. Okay. Um, you're gonna trap us though. Justice? Wait, what do you mean? The number nine. Right. Yes. Time for me to go. Okay, no! bye. Please, Clover, wait. Like hell, I'm just gonna let you walk out of here. Right? Dio leapt at Clover, his fist raised. His fists raised. Clover easily avoided him and moved towards the door. You know, Dio seems very pathetic. He can't stop Clover, he can't stop Kay. Goodbye. It just happens. I caught one glass... Glass limps? Wow. I caught one last glimpse of her face as she slid through the door. It was a mask of ice. Well, this sucks. Bye. The number nine. Right. This yes. Got it. Okay. Please. Bye. <laughs> Sorry, the announcer lines get a little bit repetitive after a certain point. Yeah, there's the game over. Fair enough. Okay. Um, you know what? We'll probably end it. We'll end it there. So we'll stop there. So we'll go all the way back here to, um, oh gosh, the first AB round. Wow. Okay, so I guess we're going to choose uh, Betray. Okay. Cool. That'll be fun, I think. <laughs> it's, it's funny looking at the fact that all of this is, like, filled in, or almost all of it. And then the rest of this is just like, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark, question mark. <laughs> okay. But, uh, yeah. We're actually, I'm going to quickly jump to here. We're not going to do it. But, uh, yeah, yeah. Um, oh, I just, that was stupid. Okay. Well, I guess we're hitting Betray, and then we're saving and ending the episode. Because I didn't think this through. Round one of the Ambidex game has been completed. Right. Well, <laughs> I'm gonna stop it here. So next time, we'll see what happens when we uh, have chosen Betray. So uh, look forward to that. Thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Bye bye.